So today I'm going to show you how to tie up the strung out rig from the Jordan Holloway rig strip range and this is a brilliant little rig. This uses a Chianti float fishing through the water with maggots or casters and it's just a nice tapered strung out shotting pattern. So I'm going to show you how to tie that up now. So we're just going to put it on the actual rig strip rig mate itself. So obviously it has a hole on one end and a groove on the other end and the actual hole goes over the lowest value of the actual rig mate. So the low numbers of the actual rig mate goes over there and the groove just fits over this pin here so now we're actually ready to tie the rig up itself so the rig strip it tells you what you need so to start with the actual float itself a Preston Chianti float this is an old version one and these just sit absolutely brilliant they've got a really nice carbon stem for following those shots through the water getting bites on the drop for that so that's absolutely perfect and then it has this nice cane bristle so it's really sensitive for seeing bites and I can only see these short. So I tend to use this float for fishing short, fishing out my hand with maggots and casters. And this is just the perfect float for it. So a Chianti float. Next as I need number nines, some number tens and then some number 11 shots. So I've got those here. These are just the Balabini versions these are. Um, they're nice and hard, they don't move on the line too much. So when I actually set up most of my shotting patterns, I don't move the shots around too much. So I want them to stay in position, and these do exactly that. They're nice uniform shots, so these are the ones I tend to tend to stick with. So the only other bit of shots I have is some number 13 stops, and this might be just to bring that bristle down a little bit, just to set it nice and low, to set it to a pimple when you're actually fishing, and you definitely see more bites, because some of those bites can be so shy in winter, so number 13 is really crucial for that. So for putting the actual rig on the actual the sorry for putting the shots on the line you're going to need some pliers never use your teeth because you're going to damage your teeth so these are just some preston pliers for putting the shots on the line the actual line itself tells you on the rig mate what i use it's 013 power line so got my 013 power line here tried and trusted line trusted trusted and uh, never going to let you down never going to break so that's absolutely perfect um i've got a loop tire for tying the actual loop on the end of my rig, the loop that connects to my hook length, um, just makes a nice, really strong, uniform uniform loop, one that's not gonna be massive, not gonna be too small. If I try to make one myself, it could be all different sizes, so just a nice loop tire, gets all your loops nice and uniform, so absolutely perfect. A pair of scissors for cutting the line, um, just to make a nice sharp edge, so when I put the actual silicon on, I'm gonna use, it just gives you a nice sharp edge to work with. So I'd have some scissors for that. And then some 0.3 Guru silicone. This is really important. It's really fine silicon. Sits really nice and slim on the float basically. And it just means your presentation is absolutely brilliant. Um, and you're gonna get more bites if your presentation's good. So really nice fine silicone is really, really important. If you use too fat a silicon, your float sometimes won't sit nice in the water. So yeah. Stick to nice thin stuff and this 0.3 guru stuff is absolutely perfect and the only other thing i have is a black marker pen this is just for when i actually put my actual rig on the rig mate itself i just mark using the rig strip exactly where the shots go and then it just makes every single rig the same basically it duplicated when i make up a new one so we'll get into tying the actual rig now so what i actually like to do is just get my actual line and attach it to the one end of the rig mate so I'm just going to undo the actual um, tight anything. And this is obviously my 013. I'm just attaching it to this extension. And this extension bit is really, really good. It just gives you more maneuverability. So when you've actually... It's a bit fiddly. When you've actually put your shots on the line, you have more line to work with when you put the actual float in the shot and tube to see if it's tested up nice. So I think having the extension bit on is uh, really good for that and I always make my rigs up with the extension on so next I'm just gonna just gonna leave up there I'm just gonna cut three pieces of silicone to actually put on the float so I cut two a bit two smaller ones so two pieces about two three mil long and these ones are just gonna go below the body oh there it is below the body in the middle of the stem these two and I like three pieces because it means if one breaks, you have a spare one and it keeps the line nice and straight along the float. So that's that. And then I cut this third bit a little bit longer because I like this to overhang the bottom of the stem on the float. Just to, just means that if you push it up too much and you have the stem of the float showing 
on that line. It can be rub against the line on the actual rig, your float can, and it can damage the line and actually cause your rig to break sometimes. So having that little third bit a little bit longer so it overhangs is really, really important to stop any damage to your rig. So just gonna get my scissors and cut a nice fine edge. Perfect, I'm just gonna put the actual eye of the float on now, put, putting the line through the eye, like so. So he's just on the line, I'm just gonna leave him there. Now I've gotta put my silicon on. This can be a little bit fiddly sometimes. Right, so that's one. Next bit. Two. And then number three. Like that, perfect. And now we've just got to actually put them onto the float itself. So I'm just going to tighten it up a little bit just to make it a bit easier to put those silicones on. So this first bit here, when I've slid him on, can be a little bit fiddly, this can. This bit's the worst bit of rig making for me, putting the actual silicones on. That's one. Then what I like to do is push him up, not right beneath, the, below the body, because it can cause your line to dig into your body and the pressure on the eye with a big fish and it comes off. Sometimes your eyes can break off. So if you just move that first rubber just down from the body a little bit, it just relieves that tension a little bit, makes it nice and um, just makes it the pressure a little bit nicer basically. The second bit, I'm just gonna slide him on, just slide him into the middle, just keep the line nice and direct along the float stem. And obviously if that first bit does happen to break or for some reason breaks, I can just move that bit up a little bit basically. And then this third bit, I'm just gonna leave a little bit of an overhang, as I've already explained, just so obviously the float stem doesn't damage the line when it's fishing. It's all nice and straight and it actually stops you getting some tangles, stops your float wrapping over sometimes as well. So I like to have that little bit of an overhang. It's gonna be a little bit fiddly. Just trying to work my way, work that silicon up the stem a little bit. And so he's on now. So the float's on the line now. So what we actually need to do, just create the actual loop itself that the actual hook length connects to. So what I like to do is just wrap this finger, this line around and create a loop and just pinch it together and get this finger here in the middle of the loop and just create those, put some tension on these two bits of line basically. And then get in my actual loop toe with my other hand. I put it underneath the actual loop itself so it's on the it's in the actual neck bit basically and then twist it twice to make like a double loop and then put this loop that i've created now in the actual middle of the loop tire like so and let it all pull tight wet it up a little bit it makes a nice strong loop and then just slowly work its way off the actual loop tire like so and now we've actually created our loop so i'm just going to pull them nice and tight like so and just work its way off the actual loop tire and i'm just going to cut the actual tag now nice and tight i don't want it don't want a big tag on it basically, just want a nice neat knot at the bottom. Like so, so I've created my loop now from a hook length to attach to. So I'm just gonna loosen the tension off there and put this loop over the pin on the other end of the rig mate, like so. Let's tighten him up again. Like that. And now using the actual rig strip itself, it tells you exactly where the shots need to be placed. So what I actually do is get the marker pen and mark exactly where the shots go basically. So working my way along the actual rig strip itself, I know that the bottom shot's here next to the loop because I always put one next to the loop of my rig. So I just work my way up now with my hands following the shots and I'm just gonna mark where the shots are supposed to go. So there's one dropper there, there's one dropper there, another dropper another dropper, another, and three more, one, two, three. So now there's lines, got black marks on for exactly where the shots are gonna go, and it just means when you tie your Juba cuts, uh, they're all gonna be exactly the same, so that's absolutely perfect. Just gonna open my shots up now. It's time to put the shots on. And reading off the actual rig strip itself, I know that number 11s are gonna go on this actual bottom end down here, so this is the, this is the number 11 shot. Nice small 
that's a nice small shot. It means a nice slow drop on the rig, so you're going to get more bites from really delicate feeding fish. So I'm just going to pinch him on with the pliers now. Not too hard, just nice and soft. Um, don't need to put loads of tension on. Don't want to, don't want to um, straighten the shots out or make them different shapes. I want them nice and round. So just nice steady pressure. So that's two number 11s. And the next shot's a number 10. So I'll put a number 10 on the next black mark. And then another number 10. And then four number nines, so we'll put them on now. This is two. Two more. And now we're basically ready after I put this last one on. There we are. We're ready to basically test the float in the shot and shoot now. So I just move the float to below all the shots like so. Get the actual loop off the actual end of the rig mate like so. This might be a little bit deep for the actual shot and shoot this one. So what I'm gonna do is just loop the actual loop itself over the actual bristle of the float like so. So the shots aren't resting on the bottom of the shot and tube. So you can see I've just basically looped that over the bristle like so, so it's created this loop of the shots and it's not gonna hit the bottom of the shot and tube. So I'm just gonna push that in, let it all sink. You can see it's sitting really, really nice to be fair. It's sitting about half bristle. So he's absolutely perfect now, ready to go on a winder. See, he's sitting absolutely perfect. And that extension was brilliant for that because obviously it gives you this extra line for maneuverability. I didn't need to keep um, loosening and tightening the line to do that because obviously the extension had that spare line to allow you to do that so it's time to put him on the actual winder you could see the float was shot to about half the bristle I like it about half the bristle because then when you get to the actual lake or the river or wherever you're fishing sometimes these floats tend to sit a little bit lower for me so I don't want to obviously get them right dot, dotted down because then it's gonna it's gonna sink basically when I start fishing so I have it like that to start with and then when I'm on the bank if it needs a number number 13 stop just to dot it down a little bit I can so that's what I like to do and I know this rig here I'm going to use it on a commercial soon it's probably not going to be deeper than top kit so I know about 15 turns around the actual winder is going to be enough for this rig so I'm just going to loosen the actual line on the end now and so it's had one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, 12, 13, 14, 15, a little bit more. And what I'm actually going to do on this end, just create a nice big overhand loop, because I normally cut this down when I start fishing, to be honest. Um, I don't want to have a massive line from my float to my pole tip, so I normally end up cutting this down. So I'm just going to create a double overhand loop, a big one, like so. Wet him up, just cut that tag down a little bit, like so, and then just put him on the actual anchor on the end of the winder. Just move it round, like so. So that is now actually the rig perfectly made using the actual rig strip, and he can you can tie up all your duplicates exactly the same now. So that's him. And on the actual rig strip itself, it tells you what hook length it should be matched up to. So on this rig, I'd have some 6-inch hook lengths to Atti Power 09 line, nice fine line for roach on maggots and catheters for the water, to an 18 SFL hook. So the actual rig strip's perfect for tying up those rigs. It tells you exactly what you need on them. And yeah, that's the strung out rig.